While Booth was well known for his acting, it was his charming good looks that garnered the most attention. Booth at the time was considered one of the best looking men in America, and Lincoln, as we all know, was not. And I'm not trying to say that Lincoln was ugly, but when Mary Todd went to visit him and was told he was shot in the face, uh, she said, where? Presidents Washington, Lincoln, Taylor, Taft, and Theodore Roosevelt all enjoyed doing some good old-fashioned wrestling. I think Taft would have been a great professional wrestler. Can you smell what the Taft is cooking? Uh, well, whatever it is, I'm sure it's outrageously high in cholesterol. <sighs> Founding father Benjamin Franklin expressed disgust over the Eagles' inclusion on the Great Seal of the United States in a 1784 letter to his daughter Sarah. Franklin suggested an alternative to the eagle in the same letter, writing, For a truth, the turkey is a much more respectable bird, a true original native of America, a bird of courage. Bald, short, fat, tiny head. Maybe Ben Franklin was a turkey. <laughs> there were a lot of surprise guests due to King Massasoit of the Wampanoag tribe, who rolled up with a posse 90 men deep. The Pilgrims didn't know how many Native Americans would be coming or what time they'd be arriving, so they just decided to put them all on one reservation. Forever. There was also maltose cannabis, a food supplement for weak children, nervous people, and convalescents. And yes, it was totally filled with cannabis, man. Are you a nervous person? Well then try Dr. Cannabis's Paranoia Tonic. Nothing cures the jitters like being led to believe that your cat can read your thoughts. On December 13th, 1977, future billionaire Bill Gates was arrested in Albuquerque, New Mexico for a traffic violation. He was arrested for a traffic violation. Apparently he was driving without a chin. Actor Nick Nolte was arrested in 2002 after falling asleep in his car on the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu, California. Hey look, it's Panama Jackass! One of General George S. Patton's favorite sayings was, follow me or get out of my way. Things didn't end well for people who got in his way. Like in 1916, when Patton tangled with Mexican General Pancho Villa in a series of armed disputes along the U.S.-Mexico border. In addition to being a revolutionary, Pancho Villa was the mayor of Chihuahua, which is ironic because when I put a poncho on my Chihuahua, he becomes the mayor of adorableness. Before the invasion of Sicily during World War II, Patton was at his slap happiest when he told his men to kill everyone, including those who wanted to surrender. The general even gave specific instructions, saying, stick the enemy between the third and fourth ribs, and stick him in the liver. Apparently when you fight for Patton, you have to bring a bayonet and an anatomy chart. Even Dr. Seuss contributed propaganda to the war effort. This is a question I ask myself all the time. What am I doing to help save us from Hitler and Margaret Cho? In 1937, the baby cage went into production. Prototypes were distributed in London to the Chelsea Baby Club, whose members lived in tall buildings with no gardens. It was so babies could get fresh air and sunlight. Ah yes, the fresh air and sunlight of industrial London in the 1930s.